to the Cowboy Church. I, we were praying back there a minute ago, and I want to tell y'all that this weekend I was witness to multiple miracles. Ricky prayed back here. God is still in the miracle business Amen. if we have the eyes to see it and the ears to hear them. So let's do that. Let's open ourselves up this morning. Ooh, let's pray, y'all. Father God, we just thank you this morning that your word is still true, that it's true every moment of every day, Father God. Father, just give us the, the eyes to see what you want us to see, Father God. We know that you lead, guide, and direct us if we so choose to submit to you. And Father, we willingly and obediently follow you, Father God. Just thank you for showing us those miraculous things. Father, we praise you and thank you for that rain that you have on your timetable for us. And we're calling it in and we're receiving it in the name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you for this service this morning. We thank you for every person that's here. Father, I pray over them. Father, I pray blessing and mercy and favor over every person here this morning. Father, we just plead the blood of Jesus over this service, over this building. Father, everyone in here, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Yeah. Amen. My God is a good God. Yes, he is. My God is a good God. Yes, he is. My God is a good God. Yes, he is. 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 My God is a good God. Yes, he is. My God is a good God. Yes, he is. 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 Yes, he did. He filled me with the Holy Ghost. Yes, he did. He filled me with the Holy Ghost. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He healed my body. Yes, he did. He healed my body. Yes, he did. He healed my body. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. My God is a good God, yes He is. My God is a good God, yes He is. My God is a good God, yes He is. 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 Shout if you believe that. God is so good. So good. Man. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the sky. They tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, they tell me of an uncloudy day. 
is on a throne that is whiter than snow in that city that is made of gold. Oh, the land of cloudless days. Oh, the land of a sun cloudy sky. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. an ear thing in this ear because I love hearing y'all's voices out there singing. Amen. So keep singing. Amen. <laughs> Let's sing. 
slow down from all that <laughs> all right y'all i want y'all to go introduce yourself to somebody hug a neck hug the ones you know the ones you don't know and try not to run them out of the building with a long hug you know what i mean we'll be back to do our worship portion still hugging i mean there's but that's good you know that's the the family here at church is with right. a bunch of huggers and that's a good thing well as you find your way back to your seat this is a time that if you've that you've come to church here at any time at all you know that we start slowing things down right now we like to take our hats off and just really start focusing in on hearing from god Amen. that your heart starts warming and opening and and, and shaking off the the junk of the week and uh, not that it was hot or anything 
But you know that we, because that, that heat causes people to be angry and grippy and fussy, and it's true. Yeah. I mean, and for those of you who work in the air condition, you can walk from where you work to your car, and you can get angry in about two minutes because of the heat. So this is a time that we get, we get rid of that, y'all. It, it just, yeah, everybody do that. As Joni said, it's time to get that stuff off your heart. And this is a time for worship that we start letting the Lord work on our hearts, y'all. Just remind y'all, this altar is always open.
Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Thank you, thank you. Every time I try to make it on my own Every time I try to stand and start to fall And all those lonely roads that I have traveled on There was Jesus When the life I built came crashing to the ground When the friends I thought I had were nowhere to be found I couldn't see it then, but I can see it now There was Jesus In the waiting, in the searching in the healing and the hurting like a blessing buried in the broken pieces every minute every moment where i've been and where i'm going even when i didn't know it or couldn't see it there was jesus for this girl who needs Amazing kind of grace For forgiveness at a price I couldn't pay I'm not perfect, so I thank God every day There was Jesus In the waiting, in the searching, in the healing and the hurt broken pieces every minute every moment where I've been and where I'm going even when I didn't know it I couldn't see there was you lord my 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 wow y'all give the band another hand awesome job y'all awesome job find which button to turn on and which one to turn off oh my goodness Whew, lordy oh, i'm God. still reeling after that oh my help help me am i hung up here we're almost there. See, it takes two now. I can make that big a mess sometime, y'all. Amen. Woo! Goodness. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. We are so honored to have y'all here today. Oh, y'all going to have to hang on with me for a minute because we've had church woo, this morning. That's a new song I, most of the church knows. And I've worked on it all week, and Joni and the band, we went over it this morning and over it, and my Lord, what a message. What a message. Huh. I'm telling you what, it doesn't matter what you're in or what you're going through. It's not there was Jesus, there is Jesus, y'all. And we better start leaning into there is Jesus. Amen? Whew, I may start preaching for it's time. My 
Man, our God is so good. Our God is so good. Father, we thank you this morning. Oh, 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 shut up. Holy Spirit, we just thank you. We feel your presence this morning. And you have your way in this church service this morning. Gosh. Father God, we just thank you. Thank you for everyone here this morning that they received, that they came expecting to hear the truth this morning, that they came to hear your word this morning, Father God. We just praise you and love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Woo! Uh, Y'all know me, I'm not embarrassed about shedding a tear, so if you're new here, get used to it when you see me minister. It happens. Okay? And if, if it bothers y'all, well... As my granddaughter says, blah, blah, blah. Because so. <laughs> it's going to happen. Good morning. For those of you who are visiting Williamson County Cowboy Church, we hope you've enjoyed it so far because it's pretty daggum awesome already this morning as far as I'm, I'm concerned. That's church right there, y'all. But uh, we are glad you're here. We, uh, goodness, I'm going to have to collect myself for a minute. I'm just still pumped up. But we are glad you're visiting. We know that you have a choice to go visit other places. The thing about Williamson County Cowboy Church is, is that we preach the Word right out of this Bible, and that's what we do. We don't fluff it. We, what's in the Word is what we preach. If it's not in there, we're not preaching it. You're not going to hear it, and it doesn't get candy-coated here. Believe me. So, if you're ready to hear the word, that's what you're going to hear today. We're honored that you would come. Hopefully, they gave you a little visitor's packet when you came. There's a card in there if you would fill it out. And in just a few minutes when we do tithes and offerings, if you would put that little card in the bucket and we'll be in contact with you just to see if you need anything. If you have any questions about the church, we'll pray for you. So, uh, but if we would like to welcome you, so if you're visiting for the first time, just stick your hand up real quick. We want to welcome you. So any visitors, raise your hand this morning and let us know you're here. Yeah, we've got a few. Y'all give them a thank you for coming. Goodness, goodness, goodness. Well, this has been a heck of a week this week for me, y'all. I know everybody has their own things that they deal with. And, and uh, Ricky worked more during the day than he likes to work during the day and I, uh, I pulled a truck, I drove a truck and pulled a dump trailer for four days this week up and down the side of a mountain and we were, poor. but I didn't have, I will be honest and, and tell y'all because I am honest and it is church so we should be honest in church anyway. No. But my son-in-law Chance, he had the worst end of it because he had to be out in the heat jackhammering rock for four days. And then he'd have to get on the skid steer and he would have to load the dump trailer while I sat in the air-conditioned truck. So I'm being honest. But it was work. It was a long week and, and just a lot of things going on. But through all that, man, there's some good things going on in our world, y'all. I know that some of y'all don't think that, but we're going to change your mind today. We're going to change your mind that there is more good going on than there is bad. Amen. And it's time that we start turning into that and realizing that it's our job to realize that and it's our job to start making more of it happen. Amen. So that's what we're going to get today. But here at Cowboy Church, we always talk about tithes and offerings every week. Our pastor Corey and his wife Jamie do not take a salary at this church. And so they believe in the Lord because he supplies all of our riches. We don't worry about anything we don't, man doesn't supply us, God does. So y'all turn to Matthew 6 right now, real quick. And it's, it's really funny because, well, that's good because I turned to Luke and it wasn't where I was supposed to go. <laughs> Whew, I'm still floating, y'all, I'm telling you. That, boy, that, that's, that charges my battery, man. Whew. I'm telling you. I used this scripture about a month ago teaching tithes and offerings and, but this week I got to really pray because I spent a lot of time in the pickup and I listened to, to sermons, podcasts believe it or not Ricky doesn't know what a podcast is doesn't know how to find them very well but he, every now and then I stumble onto one and I'd been praying about my tithe message and so let's, let's read this first and then I'll, I'll explain a little further. It says, verse 25, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, 
What you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet from your body what you shall put on is not the, is not the life more than meat and the body the raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap not, nor they gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not better than the fowl? Which of you by taking thought can add one more cubit into a stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Amen. See, right now, he takes care of the bird. Everything he created, he takes care of. Amen. Well, didn't he create us? I think that was in the first chapter. I've read this before, so... It's in the first chapter. He did create us. So if he takes care of what he created, he's going to take care of us. Those basic needs that we have, it says right here, he's going to take care of us. Let's read on. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. He knows what you need. Amen. He knows what Ricky needs. He's going to supply that. But here's the kicker. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. How often are you seeking the kingdom of God? See, that's what we have to remember. This week when I was listening to one of those podcasts, I was listening to some friends of ours' church up in Colorado, Darren and Lynette's church, and Trey Johnson, who preached here Easter, was preaching up there. And he made a statement that just, I mean, wow. He said he was in Wyoming, and the price of diesel was six ninety nine a gallon. And he was like, woo! He said, you know... That they're talking about inflation, but God showed him that if we inflate our faith, we get inflated results. Woo! And that just, I thought, wow, what a way to think of it. You see, because a lot of times we deflate our faith and we get deflated results. That's what's going on right now, y'all. People are deflated. People are deflated about what's going on in this world. Well, we teach here that we sow and we reap. We're seed time and harvest. Why don't we start inflating our faith in what we're sowing in our seed, and you're going to see inflated results. You see, I want those big monster truck tire inflated results. I don't want that little old lawnmower tire results. I want those big. I mean, when you stand up to them, they're still two stories. They got to have two ladders to get up there and change that tire. Well, it's time that we as a church start getting inflated faith, and then we're going to see those inflated results, not just in our finances, but you're going to see it in your life, in your family, in your relationships, in your health. It's going to show in your life, and people will start seeing it in you, and they're going to be going, I want what he's got. I want what Levi's got. He's, what is that? What is it? I want what May's got. It's because I'm inflated my faith, dadgummit. And I'm getting inflated results. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I mean, come on. Don't you want that? Amen. So with a big round of applause, y'all come give this morning tithes and offerings. <laughs> Woo, thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hey, John, would you do me a favor and give me some water? Please, sir. I've said a lot of words that hurt you. 
Thank you, Lord. You Praise. Pick me up, even though I've let you Good down. job. Good job. In spite of all Y'all stretch your hands out this morning. Oh, we got one more coming. Come on here, that a boy. Still I find See, that's teaching them right, right there. That's right. They're sowing, and they will reap harvest for that. Y'all stretch your hands out and let's pray this morning. Father God, we just praise you. Father, we praise you that your word does not, is not void, Father. That your word says that if we believe, we shall have whatever we ask for, Father God. And your word says that if we sow into you, that you'll open the doors of heaven and you'll pour out a blessing that we can't stand. No, we can't hold, Father God. We ain't got big enough barns. And that's that inflated faith brings us in re inflated results, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Woo! All right, are the kids and the youth going out this morning? All right, well, on the count of three, kids and youth, y'all are dismissed. One, two, three, go! Thank you, John. Well, I'm already so fired up, I'm dry. Y'all hear me going, look, 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 look. I promise I'll try to keep that down. Where are we? Where are we? Woo, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, this, this sermon title is uh, How You Representing. That's the name of the... I tried to make it sound cool, like, how are you repping? That just really didn't... I told Laurie that, and she was like, what? <laughs> Knew right then it wasn't good. So I just decided, how are you representing? And you're going to understand. I'm going to, hopefully, Ricky's not much of a painter. That's, my wife does that. I make messes when I paint. I, I can't draw. I, I can draw. I draw stick figures. <laughs> but hopefully today, what God's given me and the message that he has for y'all is that we're going to, we're going to maybe have a little picture of what it's supposed to be, what we're supposed to be like. This, this came a few weeks ago. Laurie and I had, one afternoon, it had, had, we ran into town to grab a bite because she works from home all day. So getting out of the house is a big thing, and I understand that. And so I've learned, even though I'm out all day long sometime, if she wants to get out, we're getting out. So we go to Bill's over in Burnett. This isn't a commercial, but they got great burgers. <laughs> and uh, we're sitting there, and we're waiting on our order, and there probably wasn't maybe four or five tables in there. And so we got our food, and we always pray over our food. Public, home, it don't matter. We prayed over our food. Well, in a minute, we got our food, and the table over here, there was four people, and I hear, Father, we just, they, they started praying. Oh, that's cool. I like that. So in a minute, some other people get their food over here, and they started praying. I'm thinking, holy moly, I love it. There's only five tables in here, and we're the majority's ahead. We're three out of five so far, man. See, that, that's what... And so God showed me that, what are we doing? What are we doing with what we know? Rusty said something last week. He and I have talked this week several times, and, but it really, he really set up my sermon. I told him after Sunday after church, I said... Golly, Holy Spirit, so good because you just set up my sermon. But he said that we are enlisted in God's army. Once we're saved, we're in God's army whether you want to or not. Amen. I mean, I mean, you can want to or not want to, but you're still in God's army if you're saved. Amen. So what are you choosing to do with that? And, and he also said something else that was really cool. And he said that when men or women are or, or in the military... There's, one, there's several things that they never worry about. When did, what they're eating, what they're wearing, where they're sleeping. It's just like the tithe message that we talked about. That was so cool that when we're enlisted in God's army, why are we worrying? Why are we worrying about that kind of stuff? You know what I'm saying? And we shouldn't be, because the Bible says we're not supposed to worry at all, right? Let your heart not be troubled. Right, that's what the Word says. And it also says this. It says, Let us not grow weary in well-doing, for we will reap a harvest if we faint not. 
And I love that because that faint not part, y'all, the times that we're in right now, if y'all haven't figured it out, it's not for the faint of heart. Amen. Yes. Amen? It's not. But as I was driving this week, like I said, I had a lot of time to think. <laughs> and God showed me it is an exciting time to be a believer right now. Here's why. If you haven't figured this out, people are hungry, people are hurting, people are open to receiving Jesus right now, y'all. And this is our time that we have to step up and do what we're supposed to do. Amen? It, 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 and, and, I, and believe me, when I'm preaching, you all know what, how our, the ministers are here. When we preach, we're preaching to ourselves. And I can tell you that in my past, I used to be afraid to speak up about Jesus. I used to be afraid to say, thank you, Jesus, in public or pray over my meal. No. Baby, it's time we get bold about that stuff. Amen. Not in a puffed up way. Not in a cram it down somebody's throat kind of way. Because you wouldn't want that either. You'd run just, if you know somebody like that that just tries to cram stuff down your throat, don't you go the other way when you see them coming? I mean, hey, come on. It's the way, but you want to be kind. Y'all find 2 Corinthians 5. We're going to start there. Oh, thank you, Lord. See, it's exciting. It's not a bad world, y'all. Yeah, there are bad things going on, but we don't have to choose to participate. And I, I choose not to participate. I choose to love the Lord, serve the Lord, work for the Lord, and do whatever I'm supposed to do. And I hope that after today, y'all will realize you get to too. And you noticed I said get to. I didn't say you had to. Because you don't. If you're saved, you're still going to heaven. But don't you know people that you want to go to? Don't you have family members that you want to go? That you do anything you could do to get that one person saved? Then this is for y'all. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So we're going to stop right there for just a minute because I want y'all to notice something. It says that if the tent, which is our earthly home, now, we're ta God's talking here about the body, but also in the fact that our earthly home can be your earthly home. But guess what, y'all? It don't matter what you live in. It's a tent. Now, the reason that I say it's a tent is it's temporary. You see... Our earthly home is temporary. Our real home, our eternal home, is in heaven. So, why are we more concerned about something temporary than aren't we looking forward to that eternal? Amen? Everybody with me so far? Okay, so let's read on. Verse 2. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed, upon with our house which is from heaven. If so, be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Verse 4. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Amen. Now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Now listen, I'm going to read it in the Amplified because it, it really is clear. Now he who has fashioned us, preparing and making us fit. Okay, so who prepared us? God. He, God fashioned us. But I like the way the Amplified said it. He made us fit. Well, fit means that we're up to the challenge. Right? Because if you've ever worked out or you do a job that takes some physical effort, you know that you have to be fit in order to do it. Right? So if we're following Jesus and we're doing what Jesus told us to do, then he made us fit for that job. Amen. So let's read on. 
For this very thing is God, who also has given us the Holy Spirit as a guarantee. Everybody say guarantee. guarantee. Of the fulfillment of his promise. So he promises eternal life. And when Jesus came and he was crucified and he rose, he gave us the Holy Spirit. That was the guarantee that he's coming by. That's the guarantee that the Holy Spirit teaches us, guides us, leads us, directs us, comforts us. That's our guarantee, y'all. We have that Holy Spirit. We have to learn how to move into that Holy Spirit and use him the way he's intended to be used. We've got to allow to listen to that Holy Spirit. We've got to allow to receive from that Holy Spirit. But people go, receive? Well, when you're hurting, that's what that Holy Spirit's for. You receive that comfort to take that pain away from you when you're hurting. You lean into that Holy Spirit when something that is not right with your health. And that Holy Spirit says, all you got to do is ask me. You're healed. You're healed. You're healed. Amen. When are we going to start believing that we're healed? Amen. When are we going to start believing that we don't hurt? Amen. Because we only quit that for a minute or two and then we start back doing it again. We have to, we have to, we have to, to tie into that Holy Spirit because that's our guarantee. That's our warranty, y'all. That's our warranty. Okay, let's read on. Therefore, we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. So in verse 6, I'm going to read it from the Amplified. So then we are always full of good and hopeful and confident courage. Yeah. Woo. You know, y'all, we need courage in this time. We need that hopeful, confident courage. Because our guarantee is in the Holy Spirit. We know where we're going. But it's that process of there's between now and when we get there. Amen? So, but if you start going, oh my Lord, oh my Lord this, oh my Lord that, instead of going, God, you gave me a guarantee. Amen. You gave me a guarantee, Amen. the Holy Spirit. And he says that I will, that Holy Spirit you told me will help me, will comfort me, will teach me. Amen. Are you teachable? Whew. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm working on it. Yes, we have to be teachable. Not, not just from other people. You have to allow the Holy Spirit to teach you. Amen. You, it, oh. Amen. The Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit is in us. Yes. So if the Holy Spirit is in us, we don't have a problem. If we give to the Holy Spirit. And when I say give, you've heard the old term, you give a horse to his head, or you give him the reins and let him go. Why don't we start giving the Holy Spirit the reins and letting him go? Amen? Amen. Instead of going, oh, well, this or that or the other. Baloney. Quit saying that and saying, Holy Spirit, what do I need to do? He, he'll show you. But you have to ask. You have to say, what do I do? What do I do? Amen. Y'all with me? Amen. All right. Verse 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, hallelujah. For we walk by faith. We re Listen to this. We regulate our lives and conduct ourselves by our conviction or belief respecting man's relationship to God and divine things with trust and holy fervor. Thus we walk not by sight or appearance. That's exactly what I talked about in tithes and offerings when Trey Johnson said, if you inflate your faith, you get inflated results. Man, nothing more has struck me in a long time than that, that little saying right there, y'all. Because it's so easy to get deflated. But when we give the reins to the Holy Spirit, then our faith starts being inflated. And then you start seeing things happening in your life. Amen? 
you start growing and you start seeing what's going on. You're, the Holy Spirit's building that faith in you when you think there's nothing you can do instead of phoning a friend going, this happened. What do I do? No, no, no. When it happens right then, you go, Holy Spirit, what do I do? And then if you are listening instead of, ha, ah! <laughs> sorry, uh, that had to look weird out there because it looked weird from back here. <laughs> but is you have to start listening. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. That's my Jesus, y'all. Because my Jesus, that's how he treats Ricky. Amen. He knows Ricky has to have a sense of humor. But you see, that's what happens when we get into a situation. You have to do that. You have to go, don't do, ha. Huh? Okay. You go, Jesus, what do I do? Thursday. I'm coming down that mountain with the, in that, that dump trailer holds five cubic yards. That's quite a bit of stuff. And I'm hauling rock. Mostly rock. Okay? And if y'all have ever been on that hill on 2341, it comes around the cliff and then it starts downhill and then down another hill. And I got a lady, uh, and I, I'm wrong. I don't remember if it was a lady or not, so I'm not... Ladies, please forgive me. It was a person that was not driving very friendly because they were on my bumper on that trailer. And I'm like, my goodness, you know, and I've got that thing with my engine brake on and I've got my tow haul on because going down that hill, you ever pulled a full trailer or a heavy trailer? John, you know what it's like. It ain't fun. I get down there a ways and the trailer had been bouncing. Well, it bounced for three days so that wasn't unnormal all of a sudden it quit bouncing and that was the Holy Spirit going you should pull over and I went so I'm, I've been watching my mirrors I look back there and there's something black laying back there in the road and that car goes woo and I went so I get up there where I can because there's no place I mean places on there are straight down y'all there ain't you can't just pull over I finally found a place I pulled off and I looked on this side, and there's still two good tires back there. That's good. Go around the other side, and there's one good tire. And I went, oh, there's a rim. There was no tire. It was gone. But thank you, Lord. When it blew, I didn't hear it. The trailer didn't waver. Come, I mean, the Holy Spirit. I prayed. I prayed, believe me. The Holy Spirit's going, would you give me like an hour off? because I'm kind of tired. You've been talking to me all up and down this hill for four days. And when you're towing rocks and hauling rocks, you're praying a lot. I was. Anyway, if you don't, that's on you. But nothing happened. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. See, that's when we learn to hear the Holy Spirit says, you should pull over. And I'm like, oh, that might be a good idea. And sure enough, it was. I won't tell you the rest of it because it was just a funny day because that was one of those days. That's what the Holy Spirit does for us. That's the guarantee, y'all, is we have to learn to hear. Even in those instances, it's not just about... Um, the Holy Spirit is not just about hearing emotional things. It's not just about hearing you going through... Um, does that make sense? Do you understand? It's about everything in your life that you go through. If you learn to lean to the Holy Spirit and give Him the reins, then your life's going to turn out a whole lot better than if you're trying to steer the horse. Is that right? Steer the horse? That didn't sound right, Rusty. Sorry about that if I offended horse people. But Verse 8. We are confident, and I say, and willingly rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Amen. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. Whew. I like the way the Amplified says, Therefore, whether we are at home on earth, away from Him, or away from home and with Him, we are constantly ambitious and strive earnestly to be pleasing to Him. Our driving ambition in life should be to please the Lord. Our driving ambition should not be our job. Our driving ambition should not be 
our finances. Yes, God's first. My wife is second. But my driving ambition should be the Lord. Amen. Not my wife. And she doesn't take offense to that. Because she should be the same way about me. Her driving ambition should be the Lord. And I know that to be a fact. It is. Amen. We have to have that to please Him. No matter what. It doesn't matter what you're going through. But if we learn to use the Holy Spirit to guide us, we're going to please the Lord. Amen? Okay. Verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Okay. I'm going to read that in the Amplified. Listen. For we must all appear and be revealed as we are before the judgment seat of Christ so that we each one may receive his pay according to what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. I'm going to stop right here because when it says pay, this is a whole other sermon, but I'm going to touch just on this. When it says receive your... Y'all, there's rewards in heaven. And we're going to receive those rewards in heaven when we get there. Now, how many you receive, it's what it's talking about. Whether what you've done, good or bad. If you're saved, you're going to heaven. But this is the judgment of, so do you stay in this level, maybe? I don't know. We can call them levels of heaven. I've heard different people speak on this, and I haven't researched it a whole lot, so I'm not going there. I'm not going to speak of something I don't know. However, I do know that some of people will get more rewards than others. I want to get as many as I can. Amen? Amen. That's what we should strive for. Listen, whether good or evil, considering what his purpose, oh, listen to this, and motive have been, and what he has achieved, been busy with, and given himself his attention to accomplishing. So let's go back to that one, that first thing, the motive. So, when we're doing for the Lord, what's your motive? Is it because you love the Lord or you think there's accolades to be had? I'm not by any means. I'm just saying, your heart has to be right. So whatever you're doing, do it for the right reason for the Lord. Amen? That's what He wants. He wants all of you. And He wants your heart to be after Him no matter whatever you're doing. So make your motive that you're doing it for the Lord, not just so that, that I look good if I know this or that or whatever. Does that make sense? Amen. Yeah. Now, sometimes we have to swallow some hard pills because we all like to be acknowledged for what we do. But you're going to get those acknowledgments from the Lord. Amen. That's the reason that you do it. That's the reason that you listen to the Holy Spirit. That's the reason that you allow the Holy Spirit to drive you. That your driving ambition is to please the Lord. That you walk like Jesus walked. And that people see that in you. And then our world starts becoming a lot better place. Because people see all of Williamson County Cowboy Church family members walking around. And they're going, what's wrong with all these people? Whoa. Look at them. There's something I want to know what they know. Amen. I see it on y'all. And like we've taught, Christians are at different levels and that doesn't matter. Yes, there's younger Christians. There's middle-aged Christians. And I'm not talking about age. I'm talking about how long you've been saved and how far your walk has gone. You, and there's people that have been in, in the walk a long time and are just now getting it. Hey, I'm one of those. That's all right. I'm not afraid to stand up here and move it. See, that's part of, of what God wants us to do is go, you know what, God? I didn't get it, but I'm getting it. Amen. And some days I get it better than other days I get it. Amen? Amen? But that's what we have to start doing. What's driving you? Let it be the Lord. Let it be that you want to drive and you want to be ambitious and you want to, man, that when God, when you're there to get those rewards, he goes, oh, wait a minute. We've got to bring in about uh, 15 different train loads for you. Amen. Amen. Because on this day, Sharon, you did this. 
And you blessed those people, and they loved it. Man, don't you want to be, don't you, I mean, you want to be there, and everybody in line's going, would you hurry up? You're taking too much time. Would you hurry? That's what I want to be. See, I used to not know that. But I know it now. I want to know that my God, when I get there, goes, man, you blew it off those last years. Man, you just blew it wide open. Amen. Those first couple of years, well, no, we ain't talking about that. I repented for all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Amen? We don't, we, I asked for forgiveness, and he did. He don't remember that, see? Right. He, but he's going to remember what I've done since then. Amen? That's what we want. Oh, Lord, thank you. Okay, we're going to jump down to verse 17. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So in the Amplified, it says, Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old, previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. So I was studying this out, and I was, yesterday afternoon, I was studying, and excuse me for a second. And Laurie was cooking supper, and I'd been studying and praying and sitting there at the table, and, and the Holy Spirit showed me that. It talks about, when we're a new creation, I think a lot of times we all get caught up in that we're a new creation. Old things are passed away. Well, I think sometimes that we think about, like, if you had an addiction or a habit or something and you quit doing it, well, that was the old me. I don't do that no more, right? So I'm a new in Christ. Well, that's true. But the Holy Spirit said, it's old things. Old things aren't just like an alcohol problem or smoking or whatever. It's, but did you get rid of that old grippy attitude? Did you get rid of that old worry that, you know, because when you become new, you're supposed to get rid of that old worry and that old junk. See, that, it says the old passed away, but did you let go of it? I, I mean, that's what we have to do so that when it tells us here that we are a new creature or a new person in Christ, then so be it. We should be. Yes, it takes work. I didn't say it was easy. Those old feelings of getting mad at the person riding your bumper, like this week, me and the Holy Spirit, like I said, talked a lot. And he showed me that I should be nice, and we blessed, and we sang, and I was just so nice going up and down the hill. And so we have to work at it, y'all. But we have to learn to put that letting the old pass away is everything old. Everything old. Not just that old thing that you thought was the worst of all the things. You know what I'm saying? And I was, the Holy Spirit was just so... Yesterday when he told me that, I'm like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. We have to let, like, if you gossip, you have to let that old person go away. Or if you cuss, that goes along with everything, you know? So we got to work at that. We got to work at turning all that old junk away. Amen? All right, let's move on. And old things are of God, of all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed them unto us the word of reconciliation. Reconciliation here means that God restored us because he allowed Jesus to be sent Jesus to be our sin to die for us. So when it says reconciliation, that's a neat word, but I like restore. See, God restored us through Jesus. He used Jesus. Verse 20. I'm getting to where I'm going, but that's only part of it. Now then. That, that was good, too. I, I appreciate that verse. Now then. That being said, now then. We are ambassadors for Christ. 
As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled in God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Whew. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Jesus, right there. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Oh, my Lord. Now, everybody, if you're taking notes, write that word ambassadors, of Christ, ambassadors down. The word ambassadors means to be an established statesman, a diplomat, a trusted, respected ambassador who is authorized to speak as God's emissary. Y'all want you need somebody to me repeat it? To be an established statesman, diplomat, a trusted, respected ambassador who is authorized to speak as God's emissary. Now, I thought I knew what that emissary word meant. And that's what we get for thinking sometimes. I was close, but I wasn't as close as... Y'all gonna like this. Emissary. A person sent on a special mission usually as a diplomatic representative. So, being that we are ambassadors of Christ, we are a trusted, respected ambassador who is authorized to speak as God's special agent. Woo! Didn't you always want to be a special agent? I mean, because that sounds cool. Doesn't it? I mean, come on, y'all. I mean, it goes along with what Rusty said. We are enlisted in God's army. Yeah. Well, when we find out that, oh my gosh, we're ambassadors of Christ, an ambassador uh, to speak God's emissary, that means we're special agents. Yeah. And we are, ooh, what's that word? Authorized. Yeah. Everybody say authorized. authorized. Now, there's a difference in just being able to, but you're authorized. That means that you're legal. That you're legal to use God's Word. Amen? You're a special agent. Isn't that cool? My Lord. Oh, Jesus. Representative of a ruling authority. Oh, this is... The, now, y'all need to listen to this. Doesn't speak his own authority, his own opinions, or demands mean little. He simply says what he has been commissioned to say. As Rusty put it so eloquently last week, I will quote him. I loved it. Sometimes, but always, we should say the Word of God and shut up. <laughs> I love it. Because when we say the Word of God... If we keep going very long, it's not the Word of God. It becomes all mingled in. And it becomes our opinion, which it says here that our opinion doesn't matter as a legal representative of our Most High God. You see, our words and our what we think don't matter. We got to get over that part. You know, because we like to think that we matter. Right? I mean, come on. It's okay. Be honest. Y'all, I am, you know. We all like to think that we matter. But the key in this is, is what we think. If we're speaking what we think and not what God says, then that doesn't matter. Amen? That has no legal binding authority over anything. Amen. But as that special agent, gosh, I like that. Man, as a special agent, as a special agent, you have an assignment. You do. You do. Y'all turn to Philippians 3.20. I'm getting there. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. Philippians 3.20. 
Philippians 3 20. I have to tell y'all a story while y'all are hunting that. Last, uh, the other day, gosh, it was Friday, I guess, because I wasn't working. I was off and I in Liberty Hill and my, I was getting diesel. And my phone rings and it's a West Texas number because I know the area code. I thought, I don't know that number. So I didn't, didn't answer it and let it go to voicemail. Man, I get a text message. It says, Pops, this is Patrick. Please call me. Well, that's my seven-year-old grandson in Midland. And he's staying with his grandma. And uh, that's why I didn't, I didn't have that number, so I didn't recognize it. And, and uh, so I, I called him. He said, hey, Pops, it's Patrick. I said, hey, man, how are you? And he goes, good. He said, I got a question. And I'm like, okay. Well, I knew his mom and daddy are in Mexico on vacation. And uh, he said, I got a question, but I got to get away from Mimi so she doesn't hear me. And I'm going, oh, uh-oh. <laughs> this ain't good. You know, because that scares me. If he's going to ask me a question, he don't want to be around the grandma. He's going to ask a question. He said, Pops, I got an army. Do you want to be in my army? And I said, well, Absolutely. Absolutely. He's starting the army. He's got four, there's four of us right now. But he's going to call, he's going to call my dad. Paul, he wants Papa in it too. And Carson's going to be in it. But he said, right now, he said, now, what do you want your code name to be? And I said, well, I don't know what you want it to be. He said, Roger Four. I said, I like that. I'll be Roger Four. So see, y'all, I'm Roger Four, and I'm a special agent in God's army. Amen. Isn't that cool? I had to tell it because it, it fit with me. I just thought, man, it makes your heart, but that's the way they think. Amen. See, we got to think that way. He's building an army at seven years old, but he ain't playing with little army men. He said, and we got, he said, we don't have a lot of weapons. He said, no, we do have a lot of weapons. I said, yes, sir, we do. We got a lot of weapons. And he, man, he is something else. <laughs> Philippians 3, verse 20 says, For our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want you to hear this in the Amplified because that word conversation does not mean what you think it means. But we are citizens of the state, commonwealth, homeland, which is in heaven. Y'all, we have to start learning how to think. We aren't citizens of the United States. We are, but we're not. We are citizens of heaven. Amen. We are citizens of heaven just being a representative, an ambassador on earth. That's what we're here for. Amen. But we have to learn to turn our thinking around and that, no, I live here. Well, no, but that first we started with said a tent. So that means that we just are temporarily here on vacation or something. We have a special assignment because we're a special agent. We are a citizen of heaven and we're living on earth. Whew. When we start turning our minds around, y'all, we start understanding that we are then representing heaven here. God sent us here and we're representing heaven. Listen to this. Big difference in worldly perspective and eternal perspective. When being citizens of Christ, people should be able to identify us as a citizen of heaven by our clothes we wear. Clothes, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Whoa, what is that? The fruits of the Spirit. See, when we're wearing those kind of clothes then we're recognizable as citizens of heaven. If we're wearing the clothes of the world, people don't know. People don't know. Because if we're wearing the clothes of the world, then we've got that uh, get out of my way attitude, I'm coming through, or how dare you talk to me that way, or how dare you treat me this way, instead of going, you know what, I'm sorry I don't know what you're going through today, but I love you and God loves you anyway. You don't know me, but I still love you. That's wearing the right kind of clothes. But when somebody is ugly to you and you be back ugly to them, they don't know who you are. They don't know you're a citizen of heaven. They have no clue. How are you representing Jesus today? 
How are you being a special agent? Because, see, you didn't know that coming in this morning. Well, so how do I be that special agent, Ricky? I'm going to tell you. I knew you'd want to know. Acts 1. We can flip over there if you want to. I'd like, I'm like Rusty and Corey and Howdy. You need to see these verses. It, you don't just need to hear me read them to you. They don't necessarily need to just be on a screen. I'm not, I don't have a bald spot up there. That's good. <laughs> but you need to see it with your own eyes. You see, because it goes in your eyes, and then you start, oh, I see that. Acts 1, verse 8. This is where we're going to start closing, kind of. Verse 8, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Everybody say, I want power. Yeah. That means you're authorized. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and, Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the world. Well, that's all good and well, but what do you mean by witness? Okay? Go to Isaiah 43.10. I'm trying to paint that picture, y'all. Isaiah 43.10. I'm going to read it out of the Amplified. I still hear a few pages turning. That's all right. I'm going to wait on you. I want you to see it. It says, You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant, whom I have chosen, that you may know me, believe me, and remain steadfast to me, and understand that I am he, before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. He is the only God, y'all. But what it says here is so cool because he has chosen Denise, special agent. He has chosen Betsy, special agent. He has chosen Roger, special agent. Rick, special agent. See, he chose you. Because where it says you, that's you. It's that simple. But he says two other things here that are really interesting. And this is number one that I want you to take away as a witness. Under, uh, b -b 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 -b. You are my witnesses and my servant. Did you notice that he's witnessing and serving are two different things? See, this is what another thing that we have to get through our head in this day and time being a special agent. Okay? Serving is awesome. And people that serve in the church are awesome. And if you're serving the Lord here at Williamson County Church, Cowboy Church, we love you and we thank you. We need more people serving in the church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, that being said, just serving in the church doesn't make you witnesses. Amen. That's what the Word says. He just said, you're my witness. I've chosen you for my witnesses and my servant. So, serving in church is great because we, man, more people serving, that means just a few people don't have to do everything all the time. And that's awesome. Now, witnessing is means that you're outside the church and people are seeing you with those clothes on. That's a witness. Amen? Amen? You see, you're out there and you're, what's that say? model after someone. You're modeling after Christ. You're doing, you're modeling the clothes of Christ of what you're supposed to be doing. That's witnessing. Amen? Amen. That's the difference. Number two. Y'all find 1 Corinthians 10, chapter 10. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Thank you, Lord, for the word. Thank you, Lord, for the word. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. The second thing I want y'all to get is to pray in public. Now, a bunch of y'all are going, oh, he didn't have to say that. <laughs> did he really say that? I did, but I'll explain. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, uh, verse 31. 
And it says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Amen. Amen? That was what I was talking about, Bill's Burgers, when I started. Y'all, I, I challenge you, I encourage you, that if you don't pray over your meals, start working at it. Start working at doing it in public. The, the, the whole reason is just what I said, what I observed that day. Three out of five tables were praying over their meal. I'm going to tell you something. If those two other tables didn't notice that, you couldn't convince me they didn't notice it. They got witness to that day because three tables prayed in front of them over their meal in public. And it's simple. It doesn't have to be an elaborate prayer. And tell you what, when you're hungry, elaborate prayers are not good. I mean, they're good, but no, nah, man, when you're hungry, bless this food, nourish our bodies in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm hungry. Let's eat. But you're doing it with the right heart. And you're witnessing, you're witnessing to those people that aren't doing that. See, that's part of that clothing. That's part of that, ooh, yes, thank you, Lord. Proverbs 16. Back to the left, right before Psalms. Sixteen three says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. When you're praying at work or you're speaking those things over work and just like praying over your food, you're committing whatever you're doing to the Lord. Amen? So when you commit something to the Lord, He's going to honor that and He's going to bless that. Don't you want to be blessed at your work? And who cares if somebody looked at you funny if you prayed or you said, Thank you, Jesus. Man, I say thank you Jesus all the time going through the grocery store. That's a dangerous place. <laughs> but I'm a special agent. I can slip down those aisles past those baskets. Just don't go on Tuesdays. It's dangerous in there on Tuesdays. No, we ain't going there. Number three, glorify God. Go to Colossians 3. Please, right after Philippians. Right before the T's in the New Testament. Or, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Colossians 3, verse 17. Colossians 3 verse 17 says, And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. When we were... When Chance was jackhammering that rock out, and he got hit some rock, it was ugly. I mean, the rock wasn't ugly, but it was the, the jackhammer wasn't working all that well. And so I, I got out of the truck and because he didn't have a load for me yet. And I went and stood up on, I mean, because he jackhammered. We had to go about five foot down in order to get to flat to ground zero for the barn that many of these people are wanting. And I went back there and I stood, I was standing up. And he was down there and I'm standing over that and he's got his back to me. And there's a swing they had in this tree. And I sat in that swing. I started swinging. I said, I thank you, Lord, that that rock starts getting soft and that jackhammer starts going through there. And I command you to break up in the name of Jesus. And I kept speaking to that rock. And so in a minute, I think Chance could feel me back there. And I'm not sure. He thought I was just goofing off. You know. So I went and stopped him. And I said, hey, I know it looks like I'm not working back here in this swing. <laughs> I said, but I've been here praying and speaking to that rock. And he said, it got a lot easier. And I said, I know. <laughs> and it did. Amen. But that's not where it stops. Because our mason that's got to put the retaining wall in next week showed up. 
And he's, he's Catholic. He's told me he goes to church. Real nice man. Good, talented man. And he come over and he go, boy, that's some hard rock, Ricky. I said, yes, sir, it is. I said, but you know, because I knew that he goes to church. I told him, I said, but the word says that you can speak to a mountain and it'll be cast into the sea if you believe. And I said, Ernest, I've been sitting here speaking to that rock, causing it to break up. And he kind of grinned and just laughed. That's all I said. I didn't go anymore. I didn't preach to him. I just told him that's what I know the Word said. And I left it. I shut up, Rusty. And that, that, see? That was good, wasn't it? I know. I could have preached to him. I don't, but, I don't, but see, that's glorifying God in public. See? And I didn't even know Wednesday, because uh, I didn't find out I was really a special agent until Thursday. So, man, I was, I was doing special agent work on Wednesday and didn't even know it. That's good stuff right there, y'all. We don't do it in a showy way. When we talk to people, we talk to people. We give God glory. We thank God for stuff. Use something just like that instance. I planted a seed, and then what he does with it, he's on his own. Because God will help him, and God will show him. That's some of the best advice I've heard. And when Rusty said that was, plant the seed and then shut up. Simple as that. Number four, faithful. Go to Proverbs 13. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to apologize. Y'all having to turn pages. You need to see this. You need to know what this stuff is. You got to start using this in your life. Proverbs 13, verse 17. And I, I really like this. I mean, I like it all, but... Verse 17 says, A wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador... Everybody say ambassador. That's us, y'all. We're special agents. Is health. Is health. Not only as faithful ambassadors are we health, we're healthy, but the Holy Spirit showed me if we're being faithful ambassadors, we're bringing health to people that don't know. Amen. We're speaking, we're sowing into people's health, Roger. You're that special agent, and you're sowing into people. Amen? And so when we do that, we're being health because we're being a faithful ambassador. Amen? Boy, isn't that good? Don't you want to be healing to somebody? Don't you want to speak to somebody and pray over them? Amen. Oh, my Lord. Put me in, coach. I'm ready. Man. Number five is let your light shine. And we don't have to go there, but Matthew 5 says, let your light shine upon, unto men. Oh. See, that's what, when we're wearing the clothes of our citizenship of heaven, because that's where we truly belong, that's where we came from. That's where we're going to. We are made, we are citizens of heaven. And when we wear those clothes as citizens, then our light is so bright, people are going to have to wear sunglasses around us. Amen. We need to start being that light. We need to start walking into places and people go, I don't know what you got, but I want to know. And they will. They will. They'll see it in you. They'll see it in you. And I'm closing with this, is that, because Rusty had so many neat points, and I wrote them last week, because they were very, so like I said, he set my sermon up, made it real easy. Well, him and the Holy Spirit, but I'm just trying to give Rusty a little credit. But when we sow seed, remember this. You sow the seed, but sowing the seed does not mean that you have to cultivate it, water it, harvest it, that's not necessarily our job. Our job is to go sow the seed. Sometimes it may be just, you may just be watering somebody's seed. You may be just building somebody up to help that seed that somebody else planted. It's not our job to move that seed from planting to fruition. We have to understand that. We have to understand that. Great word. Great word that we sow the seed and then move on. Move on. With every head bowed and every eye closed. If you've never, 
accepted Jesus Christ and you don't know if you're a citizen of heaven or not, now is your time. We never do a service without giving somebody the opportunity to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And right now, more important than ever in this day and time that you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Because if you don't know that you know that you know that you're going to heaven, then now is the time. And so we're going to say a prayer, and I want you to say it out of your mouth, loud, with the believers. Believers are going to say it too. Because we all have to get, as special agents of God, we are going to have to get this prayer in our hearts so that we can lead people to Christ out of this church. So we've got to get this. So believers, you say it with me. But if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, please do it right now. Say, Father in heaven, I open the door of my heart. And I ask you to come into my life and save me. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. And I thank you that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I thank you for my new commission as a citizen of heaven. In Jesus' name. With every head bowed and every eye closed, still, out of respect to everybody, if that was you that just gave your life to Jesus, I'm going to ask you on the count of three just to stick your hand up real fast because the Word says... Do not be afraid to acknowledge me before man and I'll acknowledge you before the Father. And we just want to hand you a Bible to get that in your hands. But right now, if that was you, if you received Christ today, Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, be bold. On the count of three, just stick your hand up real fast. We'll put it down. One, two, three. Anybody? Anybody? Amen. Y'all all look at me. Man, thank y'all so much for letting me minister to you. Wow, God is so good. We did a celebration yesterday for Sean Cox, and it was awesome. And sorry that if you missed it. Thank you all for the ones that helped yesterday. Awesome church family showed up and helped, and it was a great service. Sean's daughter got up and spoke, and they spoke the truth. And it was amazing. And we had, I counted eight people got saved. And I couldn't count them all. The hands were up and down so fast, but we had at least eight saved yesterday, y'all. God's working, and it is an exciting time in this day. Thank y'all. It's on. Thank you. Thank That's you. Good. Thanks. You know, you're talking about praying over the meal. You, of course, you remember Willard Moody. Anybody else here know Willard today? He rodeoed and... and uh, he preached at a lot of our deals. <laughs> Guy asked him to pray over the meal somewhere one day, and Willard said, just short, bless the food. You know, like when you're hungry, let's bless the food and eat. And I can't remember the guy's name, but he wrote kids with all this, and I mean, he went at that time, and he looks at Willard like, that was kind of short, and he said, you asked me to bless the food, not preach a sermon. <laughs> okay, we don't have a rusty bucket, but we have a bricky bucket today. <laughs> And, uh, you know, it, it, I just thank you, Ricky. I don't, I don't, I just, you know, when you go to the football game, it's not hard to recognize the football players. When you go to the, where I'm headed, well, I'm not going to get to be there, but I'm going to go watch it on television. If you, if you got if you got the Cowboy Channel, Corey Ropes this afternoon, don't please don't forget. He's in the short round at Cheyenne. Hallelujah. And I'm just believing really good things today. Goals and dreams, what? Come. Do you want to come do that? I don't have the announcements. Am I back? Yeah, I'm back on. Uh, so, the reason that you made me think of that was Heidi told me to announce. What did you tell me to announce, Heidi? I forgot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, thank you. See, I've told you, I've been fired up. All, I've been floating all morning, so y'all have to excuse me. Or don't excuse me. It's all right. Uh, so, Heidi is needing some help. We still need a few volunteers for the camp running to help him with the camera. You do a rotation. You don't do it every week. But so, if you would like to help 
or learn about the camera. See Heidi after church. Miss Sharon has water after church if you need to buy some water. Also, don't forget about Tuesday nights. It's Bible study. It's a great time. We meet at 630. Bible study runs from 7 to 8. And we're going to enlarge our tents. Oh, we're enlarging our tents Tuesday night. I like it. I like it. And, oh, we inflate our tents. There you go. And then on Sunday morning, we have a couple of classes. Alan's teaching in Acts right now at 9 o'clock. And then there's also a woman of women of all age class that's at 9 o'clock. So y'all be sure and join that. And you told about Corey, so sorry. Yeah, so Corey's up this afternoon. His performance starts at 2 o'clock our time. There in Cheyenne, and uh, so if you get a chance, you want to watch. Well, if you don't have the Cowboy Channel, go to the sports bar, just don't engage and watch. <laughs> so, as a Lord leads, you know, Ricky doesn't take a salary, you know, and and you know, it's just good groceries, it's just good groceries, and so as the Lord leads. Please bless Ricky this morning as he leads you to just, 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 uh, you know, he, he's not limited. He said, please don't limit that pen. If it wants to, however big it wants to go, just put her down there and keep her rolling. No, y'all just, boy, that's one of the messages. You could just, we could just stay here and just keep going and going and going, you know, because just to be recognizable, we need to be recognized and people need to know who we stand for and who our Lord and Savior is. And they need to be able to see it on us. And so that not being ashamed of the gospel, there's, I'm just going to pray and let's be dismissed because we could just keep going. Father God, thank you today for Ricky's obedience. Thank you for the word that you gave him, his obedience to deliver that word. And Lord, I thank you that it went into good ground today. Good ground today. Father, a people... We desire to please you. We desire to be those ambassadors recognizing that we are authorized to bring your kingdom from heaven to earth. And so we thank you as Ricky encouraged us today, you and him, and we purpose to go forth and do that. And we give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys. Y'all have a blessed week. And if anybody needs to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, done too.